learning about the features and functions of the Progressive Bed. The Progressive Bed is a smart bed, meaning it collects data points and can transmit those data points to certain electronic medical records. First, ensure your bed is plugged in. The gray cord powers the bed and the backup battery. The cream colored cord powers the auxiliary outlet located on the patient left foot section of the bed. Please note, no life-saving equipment should be plugged into the auxiliary outlet. After you plug in the bed, ensure that your nurse call cable is plugged in. Make sure your brake is set. You will see the brake and steer are a little different than you're used to. Step on the green pedal to put the bed into steer. To lock the brake, simply step on the orange pedal and your bed is locked. Prior to receiving your patient, it's very important to zero the bed. The bed is our scale. I will show you how to do this by accessing the color touchscreen. When you walk up to the color cut touchscreen, you may find that it is locked and you will need to unlock it. Just like any smart device you use today, simply slide your finger across to illuminate those green lights and your screen is now active. Go to the tab with the scale icon. Now you will push the zero button. You will be given two options, zero the bed for a new patient. We're gonna select zeroing the bed for a new patient. It's gonna ask you to perform some functions. Read the screen and act accordingly. It's asking if I would like to zero the bed, and I would. Ensure that your bed is dressed with the appropriate linens per your hospital policy and make sure the bed isn't touching the wall or any other additional pieces of furniture or objects in the room. And hit yes. And it's reminding you that your bed should be unoccupied. We never zero a bed with a patient in the bed. It's telling me to let go, hands off the bed, and your bed is zeroing. An audible beep lets you know that the action has been completed. I will hit OK, and now we are ready to receive a patient. My patient has arrived. The first thing that we need to do is to weigh the patient. You will do this by going to the color touch screen, and you will go to the icon of the scale. You will push that icon, and you'll be presented with a screen where you see the word scale. Press scale. I then have the ability to weigh my patient. So you'll push the green weigh patient button. It's going to give you some reminders, letting you know to make sure to move any devices off the weighing portion of the frame to the green hook located under the bed. I'm gonna hit continue. It's gonna tell me to let go of the bed. Previous to this patient's arrival, we had zeroed the bed. Now the patient's in the bed, we're going to weigh the patient. One beep indicates that we've collected a weight. You will look at the weight and you will determine if this weight seems accurate for the patient in the bed. If it seems accurate, you will hit accept. If the weight seemed out of context, you can reweigh your patient at this time. You will also see a history button on this tab. If you push that history button, you will start to see trending weight history of your patient. Also notice that the head angle is displayed on this color touch screen in a digital readout. You also have a head of bed angle indicator located in the upper rail on either side of the bed. Also, to support your hospital's ventilator and tube feed protocols, you may wish to set a head of bed angle alarm. To do this, you will access the color touch screen. You will go to the color touch screen. You will touch the alarm icon. You will then go to the head of bed angle alarm and you will set your head of bed angle alarm for an alarm that will notify you if the head of bed is below 30 degrees or if the head of the bed is below 45 degrees. If you select 30 degrees, you're going to hear a noise. It's not going to set right now. My head of bed was only 20 degrees. If I bring my head of bed above protocol, we now see that that alarm has gone off. The alarm is still set, however. And if we look at our screen, we will see that our head of bed is at 35 degrees. If the patient or a family member were to lower the head of bed, 
you will hear the audible alarm. As a caregiver, you can enter the room and, and turn the alarm off, or you may come in and bring the head of bed back into protocol. When you receive your patient and the patient is placed in the bed, assure that the patient's hips are lined up with the hip alignment indicators. This is important. Also, there is a feature on the bed called Flexifoot. Flexifoot is this button right here. It is a powered bed extender built into the bed. You're going to lengthen the bed for your taller patients and then shorten the bed for your shorter patients. Let me show you. Your bed may be equipped with stay in place technology to help prevent migration in the bed. If your bed has stay in place technology, you will see this notation on the side rail. In the event your patient has migrated down in the bed and you wish to reposition your patient, you have a button that is here to help you. It is called Boost. Boost is accessed right here. Boost does four things for you. First, it raises the bed to a comfortable working height. It then lowers the head of the bed, it max inflates the surface, and it puts the bed into a moderate Trendelenburg so that gravity may assist you in repositioning that patient back up in the bed. The next feature I wanna show you is the hands-free high-low. We've all been in a situation where we're working with a physician and they want the uh, height of the bed up or they want the bed down during a procedure and they're sterile, you're sterile, you can't access the side rail and touch any buttons you have the ability with this hands-free high-low to do just that. How you access this is first, you're going to lift up under the pedal to unlock it. You'll hear a beep. When you hear that beep, it means the pedal is active. You may then step on the up arrow and you're going to bring that bed up to the height that you desire. Take your foot away and the bed is in place. To lower the bed, simply step on the pedal. The pedal will deactivate after about 30 seconds. Let's talk about surface features. This bed has a mattress that provides weight-based pressure redistribution and advanced microclimate technology. You will also note that this bed is also a pulmonary bed. I know this because of the pulmonary indication written on the side rail. Let's look at the surfaces tab to see some of the functions available. Start at the surfaces tab located right here. On this tab, you will find a number of functions related to the surface. This is where the surface is put into normal mode if it was in any other mode. This is where you would max inflate your surface, initiate a right turn or a left turn. This is also where we would seat deflate if we had to bedpan a patient. We have another feature, patient comfort. If you push this, you have the ability as a caregiver to firm or soften to the patient's liking the head, the seat, and the foot section. There is also another feature called sleep mode. And when you initiate sleep mode, the mattress is still active, still has airflow. We're just minimizing mattress movement that the patient may experience for comfort. And you will know the surface is in sleep mode when you go to the home screen and you'll notice little Z's coming off of the mattress. After eight hours, sleep mode automatically deactivates. If you wish to deactivate sooner, simply hit normal. The last function on the surfaces tab is the OptiRest feature. OptiRest is initiated right here. OptiRest may provide your patient with additional comfort. What OptiRest is doing is systematically inflating and deflating independent air bladders from the head of the bed towards the foot in a slow, rhythmic, wave-like motion. To disengage OptiRest, simply push normal. If you're lowering your bed and there is anything under your bed that causes an obstruction, you will hear three chirps and you will notice on your screen a visual indicator telling you that there has been an obstacle detected. Once you have investigated and removed that obstacle, you may close the screen. You may then continue to lower your bed. Now we're going to talk about the pulmonary therapies provided by the progressive bed. 
the pulmonary therapies are activated on the color touchscreen on the tab with the picture of the lungs. When you open this tab, you're going to see the ability to enter a rotation mode or a percussion and vibration mode. Let's explore the percussion and vibration mode. Here, you have the option of selecting some preset settings for percussion and vibration. You may also create custom settings right here. In order to start the therapies, you will push the green start button once you've made your selections. Also note that on this screen, you will see a button that says history. If you look under that tab and press that history button, you will see the history of those therapies being delivered for this patient. This may aid you in auditing your hospital policies around pulmonary protocols. Next, we will talk about the rotation mode. We will enter the rotation tab, and here is where you will set your settings for continuous lateral rotation. You have the ability to select from predetermined modes. You also have the ability to create your own custom settings right here. Once you've selected a setting that you wish to proceed with, you then have the option of pushing a training mode button, which is located right here. You will say training mode yes or training mode no. What training mode will do is start the therapy at 50% of what you've prescribed. And every hour, it will increase the turn by 10%. Additionally, on the rotation tab, you will also find a history button. This history button will let you audit how often the patient was in rotation mode to audit for your hospital policy adherence. If you have any questions, simply push the question mark button located in the bottom right-hand corner of your color touchscreen. It's the icon right here. If I push that, it brings up various bed functions. You can tap one of the bed functions to learn more about that function. I'm gonna tap patient restraints. It shows me icons and identifies the restraint attachment points. If your patient requires a chest X-ray, it can be done on the Progressa bed. The Progressa bed also has a radiolucent head section. In order to position your patient for an X-ray, raise the head of the bed. As I do this, I also can push this button here, which is a max inflate button. When the patient's properly positioned, you may lower your rail and access the X-ray cassette sleeve. On either side of the surface, you will see the symbol. This is indicating where the x-ray cassette sleeve is located. To access, simply unzip, open the sleeve, and insert your x-ray cassette. When your x-ray is complete, remove your x-ray cassette, and do not forget to zip up the x-ray cassette sleeve. We have determined that this patient is at risk for falls. I'm going to activate a bed exit alarm for this patient. Simply go to the color touchscreen, go to the alarm icon, which is the bell. At this tab, you'll then want to go to bed exit. You will see three different sensitivity levels, positioning, exiting, or out of bed. Select the sensitivity level most appropriate for your patient. I'm going to select exiting for this patient. One beep lets me know that the system is armed along with the screen. And I also know on the home screen that I see bed exit is on on my left hand side and I have a bell that is illuminated green. Now, I need to work with the patient. I am going to silence the alarm so that I may work with this patient. In the bottom left hand corner of the screen, you will see an icon that is a bell with a dotted X. When I push that button, I receive several choices. I can resume bed exit, I can turn bed exit off, or I can suspend bed exit for approximately 10 minutes. That will give me the time I need to work with my patient without having to turn bed exit off. In the event I leave the room, after that bed exit timer times out, the bed exit alarm will automatically reset. When your patient is ready for early mobility, you may begin with increasing the head of bed to acclimate to upright positioning. 
Next, you can select the tilt feature located right here. This will also help with getting your patient accustomed to upright positioning. I'm going to simply press and hold the tilt button. To return this patient back to a flat level position, simply press and hold the flat button. When you're ready to advance your patient's mobility, we will use the full chair feature to allow for upright seating with lower leg dependency, all while keeping the patient on a pressure redistribution and advanced microclimate technology surface. When your patient is ready, explain the procedure to your patient. Then you can use the chair feature to get your patient into an upright seated position. You can access the chair feature on the side rail. You may also access the chair feature here on this caregiver pendant. In order to use this pendant, I will hold the key to activate. You will hold this for five seconds. Once that green key is lit, it indicates that this caregiver pendant is active. I will simply push and hold the chair button. You will see the bed moving through its articulations to put the patient in an upright seated position. Ensure the patient is secure and explain the procedure to your patient. If at any time your patient uh, wishes for you to stop, simply let go of the button. You will then resume by pushing the button and holding. When you hear one audible beep, you know that you have achieved the full chair position. We have achieved full chair. When your patient is ready, you can use the chair egress feature to assist your patient in getting out of bed. In order to do this, once you've achieved full chair, you will take the footboard off the bed. The footboard can stand independently out of the way. You will then activate the chair button by pushing and holding. You may stand in front of the patient so that the patient has eye contact with the caregiver. The chirp indicates that you should look at your color touchscreen. If you look at your color touchscreen, you will see that the seat is deflating and it tells you to let go of the chair button until you hear a beep. What is happening right now is the air is being evacuated out of the seat section to aid in the patient's egress. Air is also being removed from behind the patient's legs to aid in egress. You can monitor the progress on the color touchscreen. For best egress position, we are to push the button and the bed will actually tilt forward to assist in the egress of your patient. In this next step to further aid the patient, we're gonna to continue to press and hold the chair button. What you will begin to see is the chair will tilt forward to help the patient plant their feet on the floor for a more stable egress. As you've completed the tilt function, you now can support the patient further by inflating a lumbar support pillow. Continue to press and hold the chair button. You will notice a lumbar pillow begin to inflate behind the patient to help support the patient. Press chair button for egress, assist, or press bed flat. Now you may encourage your patient to stand. In the event your patient becomes dizzy, lightheaded, or otherwise unstable, you may simply aid that patient in laying back in the bed and press and hold on the CPR foot pedal. Press and hold until you hear a beep. That beep indicates you may remove your foot. The bed is going into the flat position, the leg section is beginning to elevate, and the mattress has gone into max inflate. You may then pull the headboard, which can be used as a backboard during CPR compressions. Your bed may be equipped with IntelliDrive. To engage IntelliDrive, first be sure to unplug the bed from electrical power 
and disconnect any nurse call cables. To engage in Teledrive, you will simply press the green pedal to the ground. You will hear a IntelliDrive wheel deploying from a box under the bed. Make sure that that wheel has completely deployed before you attempt to move the bed. To move the bed, approach the push handles. On the underside of the push handles are switches. Simply squeeze and hold the switch and then give the push handles a nudge. The bed will move as quickly as you're walking. To stop, simply let go of the switches. You can also do the same movements in reverse. Squeeze the switches, nudge the handles, and walk backward. When preparing to transport and you've unplugged the bed, look at the battery indicator for the IntelliDrive located in the head section of the bed. Here you will see that the battery has a full charge and is ready to go. In the event your IntelliDrive battery is depleted during transport, you will need to disengage the IntelliDrive wheel. To do so, approach the bed from the patient's right side. Identify under the bed the IntelliDrive drive box. Then on the left-hand side of that box, you will flip the toggle switch to disengage the IntelliDrive wheel. Thank you for your time. For more information, please contact your local Hillrom representative. We encourage you to complete the Progressa online learning module at hillrom.com. Thank you.